Race is definitely an issue in our industry, but there's not a lot of chefs that look like me. The, the sous chef that was supposed to hire me, he just looked at me like, I, I don't want to get in trouble. Like, there is no job for you. Ethiopia. You know, 10 years ago, I didn't know more about Ethiopian culture than any other New Yorker. Sweden. You know, you guys are lucky because the French accent is so sexy when it comes to food. The Swedish uh, accent is just an accent. Uh, Harlem, New York. Hey, New York is for all of us. My favorite night is going to be the time when Eric does techno night. I'm and DJing and yeah, my and wife will go to salsa night. And there you go. Uh, he's a model chef. He's a role model. And a model model. My guest today, my friend and fellow chef, Marcus Samuelson, who's sharing his amazing journey and put it all on the table. How are you, man? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I'm so happy well, to be you, here. You wear a tie for me? Or yeah, what? I dressed up for you. So first of all, copy of We Chef Thank of Yes Chef. And then... Wow, that's, that is his new book, by the way. Thank you. And I knew I couldn't come down here. This is your wife's favorite. Oh, Sweet potato it's favorite, donut. It's my favorite, too. Will you try one so that, they, are, mm. they are fantastic. No. I knew that. Coming here, I had to give it to you. And I have something for you. It looks yummy. It looks delicious. Try and tell me what you think. Oh, it's refreshing. A little bit of beer and vodka and lemon. You know what? In Harlem, we have a drink called Yes Chef. Yes, sir. That's what it is? Yeah, of oh, course. Good. Yes Chef is the cocktail. Today, Marcus uh, is in Harlem and has the Red Rooster there. Harlem has now become a home. Me and my wife, we lived in Harlem for about 10 years and we love it. It's a very unique place. It's a very special place in my heart. We actually have to cook today, or we're just gonna drink cocktails? No, we usually do both. Today, I mean, I'm so excited to come here to cook with you. So I want to do a recipe that tells about my, my history, a throwback to healthy, fun, delicious fish cooking. We're gonna do a salad, a seared salmon salad, and this that is neither French, Swedish, or Ethiopian. Ramen noodles. Yes. So it's a really a fusion dish here. We it are. is. So Marcus came with salmon, spices from Ethiopia, some Asian ingredients. It was pure fusion. And today, big cities like New York City, we have the habit of, of seeing a natural fusion in between all the cultures. We have ingredients from your country yes. of, of origin. We have ingredients from Asia. Yes. This looks like it's a salmon. You call well, Sweden your adoptive country? I have so much of my identity, what I grew up with is from Sweden. You know, 10 years ago, I didn't know more about Ethiopian culture than any other New Yorker. And it's so exciting when you just have to, as an adult, yes. dive back and learn about it. You never went back before? I so. never had a chance to go back. Uh, my sister said to me, Marcus, come on. You've been all over the world. And you don't know you anything don't go back about home. Ethiopia. What's wrong with you? So I went back. Yeah. And wow, I came back with a lot of food and a lot of ideas. Spices. This really? flour is for what? You made ramen noodles with it? With that, exactly. Ah, that... You want to have your own identity to it. So yeah, of by course. adding teff. We have a lot of ingredients here that yes. are super interesting. Let's let's start to cook. Absolutely. So you grew up at a very young age in Ethiopia. Yes. My mom passed away in tuberculosis, oh. and we got adopted through a Swedish adoption agency. And Sometimes the worst thing that happens to you can actually be the best thing that happened to you. You were what, like age three or something like yes, that? Yes, I was very, very young. Do you have any recollection of that time? First of all, culturally, from Africa to Sweden is a huge difference. It's night and day. I went from the warmest country to the coldest country. To the coldest. You adopted by a Swedish family. Yeah. You learn Swedish? Swedish is my first language, even still to this day. You speak better Swedish than English? Yeah. Because to me, you have no accent, but <laughs> I have no one to judge about accents. You know, you guys are lucky because the French accent is so sexy when it comes to food. The Swedish uh, the accent, accent is just an accent. Uh, just well, an I accent. remember the, the, the chef in the Muppet Show. <laughs> exactly. You know, like, That's my uh, guy. So Marcus came in the kitchen. He was very excited to show me his dish, and he was very hands-on. I read somewhere that you, you love to cook with your grandmother. Mm -hmm. Elga is... For me, the reason why I can stand here with you today, because she was really the first chef to me that showed me basic things. And she's just said, you know what? We're going to do roasted chicken. The next day, we're going to do chicken soup. And the third day, we're going to do chicken dumplings. How old are you when you are with grandma in a, in a kitchen? I started very, very early. Like, for me, we went mushroom hunting with the family. Yes, of course. Uh, and then you go berry picking. You were fishing too or not? A lot of fishing. Growing up with food through three angles. For my grandmother, it was really through 
pickling, preserving, cooking. On my father's side, it was more this basic fundamental fisherman village, right? Where we picked up, like, let's say mackerel, 40 mackerels a day. 40 mackerels a day? Yeah, it's very, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's no, but you better better like it, because if not, you're doomed. Exactly. <laughs> At the same time, I mean, you go, you're growing up, you're going to school. Yeah. Uh, are you a good student? Or? I, did, I did okay at school, but I, okay. I, I loved cooking. Yeah. So you really want to be in the kitchen? In the you, kitchen, yeah. You wanted to be also a soccer player. Yes. You were in a Swedish team? In the team for the state and the uh, city. So but you I were think, good. Yeah, I was good, but not good enough. But I think with every great person, there's always a failed something else, right? One of the things, Eric, that is great is about uh, sports is you learn a lot of things that you learn in the kitchen. Work ethic, listening to the coach, work as a team. Yeah. So when I came into the kitchen, I was like, wow, this is yeah, just like... pleasure, for sure. Yes. It's just like in, and, in, in and the kitchen and you say yes, chef. Too, I guess. Yeah, in the kitchen you say yes, chef. In the kitchen, you, in the, in the soccer practice, you have to listen to coach. So there's so many similarities to me in the kitchen and in the kitchen. In a, in a, in a soccer pitch. To become a chef, it's hard work. It takes years of experience. Um, you have to be very humble. It's a tough world. So supposedly you're too small to play soccer. Yes. Okay, fine. So you <laughs> must be not happy about that, right? <laughs> Um, it was a tough day, I tell you that. And then that was a defining moment, and is when you said, okay, I cannot play soccer as a professional, mm -hmm. so I'm going to a vocational school. Yeah. And how old are you when you do that? About 16, 17. 16, 17. So in, in that school, did, I, mean, you don't, I mean, you learn the basics like yeah. every school. What is your vision at that time? What was uh, your state of mind? I heard about a couple of students that were older than me. They got a chance to go to France. I want to get a chance to go to France. Once I understood this was one-star Michelin, two-star Michelin, three-star Michelin, I said, oh, I have to go. So you go to France. France. I didn't get to France. I didn't get the chance. I applied, and? but it was the best thing that happened to me. Everything that you have something that doesn't go right, yes. you think is the best thing. You're optimistic. Yeah, I am, but, but it also showed me because I got to France when I was ready to be a cook to cook in France. From 16 to 23, I got to Switzerland. I got to Austria. I got to travel so you around the, the world. And the so I was a much better cook when I came as a commie to Three Star Michelin in France, to Georges Blanc. To Georges Blanc. I could actually hang with those boys. They just never seen a black chef at that time. The sous chef that was looking at me, yeah. he just didn't want to get in trouble. You are well known for being one of the most well-dressed chef <laughs> uh, on the planet. A month ago, you were in, in Vogue magazine. Yeah. I mean, who, who gets in Vogue magazine? I mean, seriously. <laughs>